Good afternoon, LBC Radio. My name is Corey Rosen with the Story Podcast. Today, I have a awesome guest. But before we but a little bit, but before we get into that, we have some mer- new merchandise. If you'd like to really support us, we have stickers with the Story logo, and we have hoodies coming out with the Story logo on the front. And the first fifty guests on the back include today's guest, Mister Kyle. Q in. Q in. Q in. Mr. Kyle Q in. Kyle, I, I was like, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Kyle lives in Lancaster, PA with his wife and three kids. He is the founder of the entertainment booking platform Stage Rush. He does freelance app development, web design, and marketing. He is also the founder of a nonprofit called Sober Bars with the mission of advocating and promoting substance free spaces and entertainment in the community. Kyle is also passionate about people, innovation, creativity, and art in all aspects of life. You can find all of his stuff, including Stage Rush, at stagerush.com. You can find him on Facebook, Stage Rush app. Uh, that's facebook.com forward slash Stage Rush app. You can find him on Instagram, Stage underscore Rush. And you can find all of the cool stuff they're doing there. So, Kyle, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome, man. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. So beginning right beginning this whole journey that you've been on you started with of all things comedy (laughs) yep for sure so uh yeah from high school uh i was big into theater arts and drama and uh and by extension being a class clown eventually involved into things like stand-up and improv comedy so what what were your inspirations for comedy what what, were specific people was it just everyday life stuff or yeah i think when you are someone who uh, enjoys making people laugh and you do it often, you start to get kind of a high off of that. Mm-hmm. So just the repetition of people of, you know, being able to come up with some clever things or witty things that make people laugh and seeing people enjoy laughing, that really cements it. And then uh, we watched a lot of Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live growing up back when it was really good. Right. Yeah. And so obviously, you know, I fell in love with Saturday Night Live. I wanted to be on Saturday Night Live. And so that that's kind of a lot of where my uh, comedic behavior began. So what, uh, did you grow more into that, or did that just kind of like leave by the wayside? That, that went by the wayside. Uh, it's something that I was passionate about as a hobby, but not as like my mission in life. Mm-hmm. So as I got older, as my journey in life you know, went farther, uh, you know, I started just getting jobs to make money, working in restaurants and bars, uh, and then started getting into uh, software development. And then you know, once you get married and have kids, you can't really do improv anymore. Uh, well, well, you probably can, you could, but, uh, <laughs> but it might get you in trouble. You get in some trouble if you're not watching what you're saying when you're doing improv and you're married. So, uh, but yeah, so, uh, it's still a fun thing that I'm passionate about doing on the side when I have time and people like Lancaster improv players, mm-hmm. uh, I used to do improv with them a bunch and they're awesome. Awesome. So you started working at restaurants and, and bars, right? Yeah. So what was that like? Uh, <laughs> awesome. Uh, working in restaurants and bars, uh, there's, Pros and cons, right? right? Like the, the cons are having to wait on people and, and different people responding to having a servant or waiter differently, right? Like right. some people are really respectful and kind. Other people have little bells or snap their fingers. So, and everything in between, right? Uh, and then, uh, you know, the lifestyle that comes with working in restaurants uh, and bars is, is people that stay up late, mm. uh, right? People that probably have, you know, sometimes can be struggling with substances like I had been for a long time. Um, you know, so there's a lot of, uh, pros and cons, but on the pro side of it, uh, you'll never find another job where you talk to so many different types of people in Mm. the world, right? Like working in restaurants, you get people from every country coming and sitting at your table and you learn to communicate and have dialogue with all different types of personalities and people of different languages, uh, and different places. And and it's awesome. I think it's a job that everyone should have to have Uh, for like six months. You should have to like intern as a waiter or, or in a restaurant to just get the experience of working as a team. And working with so many different people. Yeah, that, that is one thing that I've definitely tried to stray away from, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I told myself when, when I was a kid, listen, I do not, it, you, if you caught me at a McDonald's or like at, at like a restaurant waitering, it's over for me. No, no, it's great. It's great money. I couldn't, you, I couldn't think of a better way to make money if you don't have a college education than, than waiting tables. Because people will actually tip you for how nice you are to them or mm. how or how you know proficient you are at your job, and some people just tip out of compulsion. Right, like, it's like also true, I yeah. myself, I will tip twenty percent as long as you don't smack me in the face. I will tip you twenty percent because I've been in that industry, and so right. like it's a it's a compulsion tip, right? 
and, and so it, you can make some great money and you meet a lot of cool people. Yeah, well, I'm not I'm not knocking it at all. It's just I it's just not for me. I it, I'm an introvert first off. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and right, exactly. <laughs> I, hear, I, I, hear don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and second off, I hate I'm a really big germaphobe. So oh, yeah. I would hate stacking dishes of the other people that have used and I would just Oh, you'd be a great chef. I well, <laughs> if I could cook, I'd be a pretty good chef. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, otherwise I, it, it would just be a uh, gross out for me it, it, and I'm not very good in social situations, but I've, you know, granted I'm better than I am now. I'm talking to all these th- different You're people. You're on a podcast. I'm on a pod. I have to Potentially be millions of listeners. Potentially. Uh, maybe one day, <laughs> maybe beat Joe Rogan one day. <laughs> that'd be, a, that'd be something crazy. Yeah, you have to be something crazy to beat Joe Rogan. Oh, absolutely! I have to be in it for a multitude of years. But um, so you learn a lot of stuff, right? And you saw a need. Yeah. So uh, uh, in, working in restaurants and bars, uh, I developed uh, an addiction to alcohol. Mm. Uh, staying out late, drinking, partying, right? And uh, sorry, you developed a need. Yeah, alcohol. No, 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 that's, no to, to kind of paint the backstory. So like, you know, kind of where, how did I get to where I am today? Yes. Uh, you know, working in these restaurants and bars, like the only thing open when you get off work is the it's bar, bar right. right? They're, they're open the latest, right? Everything else mm-hmm. closes at a reasonable sleeping hour. So you're out, you want to socialize, you want to talk about how rough your day was, talk about mm-hmm. that jerk at table four, you know? <laughs> and so you go get a drink, you go, you know, and you socialize and some people can socialize with substances and be okay. Other people, you turn the key and the ignition starts, right? right? And so I developed uh, a drinking problem. Uh, started to affect all of my relationships, mm-hmm. affect my ability to be a useful contributor to society. Uh, so um, one day, decided it was time to get sober, came up with an idea for sober bars, bars without alcohol, right? Mm-hmm. Imagine bars, open late, partying, live music, meet girls, whatever you want to do, no substances being offered, no dollar shots, no liquid courage, people just socializing like we were made to do. Right. So I got compelled by this idea and... Um, but I wasn't sober yet. So all my friends are like, well, how, who are you to do this, right? right, right. So I thankfully was plugged into a, a local church. I had a small group. I had people who knew what I was struggling with and they were alongside me. Uh, and then, you know, when I finally was free from drinking, uh, you know, I explained it to people like it felt like a light switch. Like I prayed and a light switch happened. And, but everyone who knew me said, Kyle, it was not a light switch. We were there for many years watching the battle, watching the struggle. It was not a light switch, trust Definitely not a light switch. But after I got sober, I still worked at bars for six months while being sober. Mm. Uh, so that's just my story, not a prescription. I wouldn't recommend that for anyone. But while I was sober, I still worked at, at bars and then tried to start this sober bars organization to promote substance-free entertainment in the nightlife, right, and give people another option. Uh, and then that did not uh, – it didn't really take off the way I wanted it to. I was still young, still trying to figure out how do, how do I start a bit? How do I start an organization? Like how do right. I do these things? So I made a lot of failures uh, and wasn't able to get it to where I wanted it to be. So I'm still, it's still my passion project, still something I'm working on, trying to make it into a directory and a resource for other people who are doing it well. Like other people in other states are starting sober bars oh, and wow. they're effective and they're profitable and they're doing good in the community. So I want to kind of just highlight what they're doing. Since I couldn't do what they were doing, I want to highlight what they're doing and elevate them to that. Um, but anyway, full circle, after sober bars didn't work out, I got into sales, right? Need to make money, got to support a family. So I got into software sales. Uh, a buddy saw me and he said, Hey, you know, you've got the gift of gab. Let's put you behind uh, a phone and why don't you dial and try to make some sales. And so I started getting into the sales industry and started learning about technology. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I came from a a past that was not very organized. (laughs) And so when I found that technology could organize things, I started all the lights in the house started going off. And so I started to play with the technology, learn the technology. And, uh, over the past couple of years started to really, uh, flex my skills in software development, learned how to develop apps learned uh, how to code and how to build. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that's where I learned the skills and then was came up with an idea, uh, which is stage rush, yes. uh, which is why we're, uh, what we're talking about today. Yeah. So s- tell me what stay r- stage rush is. Yeah. So stage rush is an entertainment booking platform um, for performers, venues, and fans, right? So you can think of it like Airbnb, but instead of booking a hotel or booking a room, you're booking a band for your bar or you're booking a band for your backyard party or your bar mitzvah, whatever you need to book a band for, that's what Stage Rush is. Um, so you're just going to allow you to uh, you know, book any type of musician to any type of location and then also follow your favorite bands and see where they're playing tonight, see what venues have what bands tonight, and then even 
kind of tip bands or support bands that you really love. So is that a local venture as of now or is... Well, uh, so primarily we're based, we're headquarters out of Lancaster, uh, where we live. Uh, and so we have, you know, in the Lancaster, Philadelphia, New York, New Jersey area, we have like 100 performers and about half a dozen venues. We just launched last month, but this is a national uh, uh, platform. So it, do you have goals to be national? Yeah, like we already have some performers in Texas and in oh, wow. Alabama and Arizona. So we have some different performers who are finding us from different uh, parts of the country, uh, but we're heavily concentrated right now on East Coast. So how do how does one expand? Like, cause what what's the what's the purpose for a, a person in Texas to sign on to your uh, website where all the venues might be over here? Yeah, no, it's a great question. So uh, over time, as we expand and we're in every place, right? We'll have venues and performers and fans in each location. But if you're a performer in Texas, where we all our ven- all our venues are in Lancaster and Philly, then uh, the performer in Texas still gets a lot of benefit from our platform because. What our platform does for performers is it helps them market themselves better and not just to the venues on our platform, but to anyone they share their profile with. Mm. So when you sign up as a performer, you create like your profile, right? So you've got like your photos and your videos and your Spotify playlist and you've got your upcoming events and you've got everything in one place the way that people would expect to see it, right? And so you've got everything in this neat EPK or profile and now you can share that with the venue down the street. When you're emailing the venues in your area, you can say, hey, check out my profile. And where that's helping musicians and performers is they're really good at playing music and performing. They're not really good at marketing themselves or selling themselves. This is true. So like they'll send you like one picture in an email or like a YouTube video that's like really blurry or they'll send you a whole novel, right? right? And venue managers, they don't want either of those things, right? Really? Most people want a profile where I can see a glimpse of everything. I want to see the whole picture. I don't want to, you know, I don't have time to read a two page novel about where your band's been. I'm busy. I'm a venue owner, right? Right, I've got to book shows this week, right? So show me the highlight reel. I want to see the highlight reel. I want to see the photos, the videos, and I want to see kind of what's your social following. Do you have a draw in this area? Like, let me know if this is going to be a good partnership. Gotcha. Uh, And if if you've got the style that we're into. And so that's where it helps musicians is market themselves better. Because a lot of musicians, they'll have a website. Yes. And a website's great for doing that when people know who you are. Right. No one's going to your website if they don't know who you are. Right, so our platform is for people who are looking for bands to find a band, and if you're one of those bands, and they find you. So, so venues, right? How does how how do venues get on board with this? Well, so venues uh, and performers just sign up right on stagerush.com. But the thing that venues uh, are digging about this, so we talked a lot with Telus 360 mm-hmm. uh, here in Lancaster, the kind of like the entertainment hotspot, and uh, they've helped give a lot of positive feedback and criticisms early on about features that should be or shouldn't be. Uh, but one of the things they brought to our attention was as, as a venue manager, when you're, when you're a venue like TELUS, right, there's two types of venues. There's venues who are uh, really, really popular in the know, and there's venues that aren't, right? Yes. So TELUS is really popular. They're in the know. People want to play TELUS. So they get performer requests via email constantly, right? Big a- email inbox full of a different format for each different per- – everyone does it differently, right? Everyone's got oh, a different no. email template that they send, right? And so it's really hard to manage as a venue, manage all of those applications. And so uh, what we provide for venues is the performers fill out an application. You get a stack of performer profiles like it's a Tinder profile or something, right? And you can just swipe left and oh, swipe really? right. Yeah, is it, oh, yeah. Is it literally? It's not a swipe. You, it's a well, click. Yeah, right, right. But it's the same idea. of You can go left or right and just click, you know, I'm into this one. I'm not into that one, into this one. And now you have, like, your list of performers that you're into that you dig and when you're not into someone, you can just say, hey, not our style, or hey, try again in six months. Mm. But it makes it easier for the venue to see a full picture of the performer, what they're about, what their style is, get a better understanding to evaluate, and then make a decision quickly. And performers get closure. Like, there's nothing worse than applying to a venue, not and they hearing, just never tell you. Yep. Not hearing nothing. You hear nothing. It's being ghosted, right? Yep. And so this helps prevent that, too. So that's that's one of the big things we solve for venues, is being able to manage all those applications, in addition to events and booking and payments and all that. But then there's the venue who's not in the know. Yes. The venue who's maybe in the sticks. They're not plugged into the music scene. Maybe they're trying to dabble in music. They don't even know who to call. You know, yeah. call my call my uncle's friends, you know, brother Tom. Right. And he knows a band, right? And he knows a band. <laughs> right? and, and it's his band, right? Right, right, right. Uh, they yeah. don't know where to go. And so this is also a platform to help people who aren't plugged into the scene get plugged into the scene and find performers and say, oh, my gosh, look at this. I can book this guy right now with a click. I can book this guy to my club or book him to my bar or my restaurant, and now I'll have music Friday night. Like, now I'm plugged into the scene, which is cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So, why? 
why does a comedian build a, a online entertainment platform for booking bands? Yes. <laughs> I just got really bored, man. No, uh, <laughs> you know, one day I was like, I'm sick and tired of doing this. I'm going to start a website. Oh man. No, uh, to be honest, I, I was bored. So COVID, right? Right. We, I feel like in a, in a, in a lot of ways we're through COVID, right? We're not through the damage of COVID, but we're through the, the thick of it, right? Yeah, we're, we're moving on. Yes. We're moving on from COVID and COVID was terrible. COVID sucked, man. Yes. COVID took away the one thing that's, uh, foundational to human life. Community. Community. hundred yes. percent. COVID took that away. And when you're a young family, like me and my wife, we're newly married. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a, a kid for each year that we've been married, basically, right? So we've got uh, three kids. We're a young couple. COVID was terrifying for us, yeah. right? Young kids, you don't know if this cold's going to kill them. You don't know what's going to go on. So we got real conservative. We didn't see anybody. We masked up. We did very small gatherings. Life got very boring for a couple of years, right? So one day we're sitting there. It's a Saturday bored you know you can only build so many Can't pillow forts anything. right yeah, before right. You're like all right <laughs> can we do something fun and i say to my wife i wish we could just call an acapella group i wish we could just order an acapella group to our door they would sing some acapella and then they would leave right stay six feet away sing some acapella and then leave and that's when the idea hit like wait a minute we can order anything to our door right now except for there's no real good way to order entertainment mm. to our door and so that's when it started as this like home delivery entertainment platform but then as we started to do research and talk to other people, they were like, venues need this. Bars right. need this. Like, you know, people need it too, but the bars really need it. And so it started to really grow and evolve from there. Yeah, that'd be, uh, it's like almost, <laughs> it's funny that you uh, almost created uh, a website for telegrams or like music telegrams. Like that, like that exactly. kind of thing. Yeah, 100%. That's kind of where the seed of the idea started. It's like. I, you know what? I could really go for a Christmas carol right now. Let me just order. Yeah. Or I, I should send my mom a funny caroler. Let yeah. Let me go and do that. Yeah. Uh, dude, that'd be so funny. Like, I'm going to prank my friend with these Christmas carolers. Exactly. Like, hey, go sing at this guy's house and really annoy the crap out of him. Yeah. Me. My buddy can't stand rap. I'm going to send a rapper to his door. <laughs> just the freestyle with a boombox. That'd be funny. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. But you, fe you found a need that venues, how'd you find that, that venues needed this? Yeah, so uh, I mean, when I whenever I have a good idea, people that know me know me. I don't stop talking about it. So I just started talking to everyone about this idea. Uh, and one of my friends who's in the music industry uh, in a band called the Nancy Reagans, Tom Chafin, he's yeah. a local. Uh, he, me, me, and him had worked on previous projects together. And he said, "Kyle, you really got to do user research." He's like, "You can't just go build this thing you think is cool without talking to the demographic and the audience, right?" Yeah. And this has always been his big thing. He's like, "Get user research. Get other people to tell you what the need is." So I started calling all the performers and, and jo joining performer Facebook groups and saying, hey, guys, where do you do this? How do you do that? What would you do with a tool like this? And then started getting some feedback. And then I was like, well, why don't I talk to a place like TELUS? Mm. They've got performers left and right. What, 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 they know I, what they're doing. Why don't I see what they need? Yeah. And I went there and I walked and I, I emailed to talk to Bill, Bill Speakman from TELUS. Uh, didn't think I'd get a reply. He was like, oh, my gosh, this sounds super cool. Why don't you come in? We'll talk about it. I was thinking about something like this myself the other day. I come in, we start talking about it. He's like, this is a huge need. It's a huge need to be able to manage all these performer applications and be able to manage the booking process without so many frustrations and so many, you know, back and forth. Kyle, turn my 100 emails into one email, please, right? <laughs> and, so, uh, and so we started talking about it. He started giving us some great ideas for features, and that's kind of uh, where it grew, grew into that uh, realm was just uh, trying to get more user feedback and not trying to do it on my own. Mm. So what's it like to build a website? Uh... <laughs> It's a lot like raising a child, okay? Really? Uh, you love it, right? You love it. But sometimes, sometimes, man. You just, just want to punch the monitor and say, goodnight. Just, you just want to give it such a hug. No, it's, uh, uh, it, it's great, man. It's really fun. You get to be free to design really creative artistic expression, right? You're building something from nothing. Right. Right, so you get to design, you get to build, but then you get to really spend like, I don't know, six hours on one little font, Right. Or you get to, you know, make it just right. Right. Depending on your personality, like I'm a perfectionist. Right. So I've wasted time for sure on the wrong things. But sometimes I've spent time on the right things. But it, it, it's fun. It's exciting. It's also uh, exhausting. It's exhausting to I'm build sure. a platform and really, you know, have to build through all the bugs. And I'm not doing it by myself. I have a co-founder who is with me and, and we both specialize in different aspects of de development. Mm. So we complement each other well. We call each other our work wives. Uh, you know, and so uh, we really just kind of uh, are a good team 
when it comes to to building this thing together. Yeah, I kind of wish I had another person (laughs) with me to help me manage everything else because this is this venture I'm doing all by myself. Oh man, you got to find another that synergy when two people get together. That's where the magic happens. I know. Yeah, I know. And uh, but it's it's finding the right person is the problem, right? It's like marriage. It's it truly (laughs) is. You're locked in, man. Yeah, you're locked in, and especially if you're going into this with uh, for me. I don't, I don't know your situation, but for me, I have no money. Yeah. Right. I'm a poor college student or I just graduate college graduate. Right. Yeah. And I, I had this wild idea. I was like, Oh, I want to start a podcast and I have all these bigger ideas. Like, Oh, I want to run festivals. Oh, I run a, I want to create a radio station or, Oh, I want to do all this other stuff that would be really, really cool and really, really fun. Yeah. But what money do I have? Yeah. I can barely pay rent. Yeah, and to ask somebody to to because what I'm really struggling with, and this is uh, if you are interested in joining me, please let me know. Uh, but what I really need is a marketer. Yeah, and someone who knows what to do, someone who knows how to clip up stuff, and because the the idea is, I know that it is a hard ask to get somebody to watch a two hour video, <laughs> right? That's a that's a that's a movie at this point. Sure. Um, yeah, but uh, other podcasts that I've seen or other, I like watching news a lot. Okay, uh, news podcasts. That's depressing. Uh, well, <laughs> I it, it invigorates me. I like to know what's going on. I I you know stuff like that. Yeah, but sure. uh, the 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 newscast that I watch, they do like a, a two hour live stream video with. They bring on politicians. They bring on, uh, you know, pundits. They bring on other other like influential people, whether it be in the music scene or in uh, you know the FBI or whatever. So I, I find it really interesting to hear because yeah. you also get to hear their stories as well. Like what was it like to be in the FBI of Obama or Trump or whatever? Sure. So I was like, that's pretty cool. But what they do is that they do this two hour live stream and then they splice it up in like 15 segments of like, cause they're, they're a news company and the way they do it is they have stories for the night, big stories of today. So each story is like 10, 15 minutes long and that's where they get a lot of their traction. Right. Yeah. Because a 15, 20 minute video is much easier to watch than a two hour one. Oh, right? 100%. Yeah. So that's that's where I got th- this idea of like, okay, I want to I want to have this live show and then splice it up. Yeah, 100%. Because you're going to have the people that watch the whole thing because they're so interested. Exactly. And then you have the people that have, you know, 10 minutes on a lunch break and they right. just want to catch us. They want to get this, the, the highlight reel, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I think that's a great model to follow. You just have to find people and there's places to find people on the cheap. But you're not going to find anyone to do anything for free, nor no. nor would you want that, right? No. Because then you can't really s- use artistic uh, authority and say, right. "Hey, I'd like it to look different." They'll be like, "Well, then you do it, right?" Exactly. So like, there's places like Fiverr. You can find people who do something like five bucks a job, right? You can find like places like uh, uh, freelance uh, gig economies, mm-hmm. uh, like Fiverr or Upwork. Uh, but then also finding a co-founder, which really that's, worked well for me. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying. Yeah. To, like, I, I'm not asking it for free. Uh, it would be more of a partnership. Okay, once yeah. I start making money, then you start, you know, like that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, so I would say, uh, you know, date some people. We can go on a on a on a story date, story podcast date, right? <laughs> date some people and see, you know, who would be really aligned with that, with with my mission, and who would be able to contribute, who would be able to contribute in a way that would be effective, right? Like, don't right. find someone just like you because it'd just be you two doing the same stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Compliment you well. That, yeah. uh, I don't. I don't need somebody else on this show. Even though a panel would be would be pretty cool. That would be cool. I mean, that's that's the plan. I'm gonna. I I have a a group coming this Saturday. I think all three of them are gonna be here. So I'm, it's a group from Chicago. So I'm gonna have to manage three different people. That's uh, awesome. So that that'll be fun and, and a new experience. Yeah, and you've done really well. You know, for just being a, a one guy show right now, like you've done awesome. You had Rick Ruoff on here. He's yeah. kind of a Roots and Blues uh, festival, and and the Chameleon. Like you've had some really heavy. You got Stage Rush on here. I mean, you've had. Some I, I know. I, I, I just li- listen. I just. But I mean, well, I mean, it's it's not that hard though, because people love talking about themselves, and it's oh no no joke. It's no literally joke. just. <laughs> Some of these people that I've got on, uh, like the artistic director of Servant Stage, which is like, you know, the head of all the theater stuff. Yeah. Um, I literally just asked. I was like, I, I messaged Servant Stage, like their the Facebook, hey, do you, is there anybody that would be interested <laughs> in talking? <laughs> uh, I was like, and they, they got right back to me. Yeah, the artistic director. And I'm like, oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. Yeah, that's awesome. Recession-proof business for sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. So um, it's... 
if you are interested in, in partnering and becoming a co-founder, please let me know. I, I'd love to work something out because I want to expand. Yeah. And you can only expand with marketing. Yeah. Are you talking to me or the audience? Anybody. Everybody in between. Anybody in between. Looking for a co-founder. Looking for a co-founder. But <laughs> they, need, they, need a, they need a Tinder for co-founders. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I bet they have one. Uh, if not, I'm gonna build one tonight. There, there is a website <laughs> or an app called Vamper, but okay. it's like for musicians. It's it's exactly like Tinder, but it's for musicians. Okay. Except it's not for dating. It's for playing together. Okay. So so you you put your webs or you put your profile oh, I've on seen there. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you like swipe right of people you want to play with or not. Oh, play that's with. cool. That's like Bandmix. Bandmix does that. too. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. There's okay. a lot of platforms out there. There's it's crazy. There's a, so many platforms out there helping musicians find each other and find gigs none of them are really doing it with excellence right, right exactly. there's a lot of airbnb types there's no real airbnb for the yes. industry of connecting musicians and connecting bands right uh, it's, but there's some close ones out there for sure it's, it's always funny to look look out and see these different websites that are almost what you want almost yeah. what you need and for everybody it's almost what you need for everybody but it's not it yeah and are you building that? What everybody needs? I mean, what what founder says they're not, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> For sure. We we are trying to fill the hole that we see in the industry of something that benefits uh, the intersection of the community. Right. Right. So like you there's platforms out there where you can book a band. Of course. But there's nothing for fans to do. Ah. Uh. Right? Or there's platforms out there where I can book a DJ to my wedding but there's nothing for venues to manage all of their events, yes. right? So you have all of these hodgepodge solutions. We're trying to be that it's central everything. location, almost like a social media, if you will, without talking, right? Right. So like a social media where there's no commenting, it's just seeing who in your neighborhood does cool stuff, booking them if you want to book them, and then tipping them if you're at the show on their profile and doing all of that and connecting people. Like sometimes me and my wife, like I don't know if you've ever been on Zillow and looking at yes, houses. Like houses. You're, not, you're not in the market to buy. You just want to look. Just a little you want to peruse yeah. the houses. That's what's also cool about Stage Rush. Want to know who does cool music in Lancaster? Jump on Stage Rush and just flip through and play their videos. And now you know, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this band was local. I didn't realize yeah. my buddy's uncle's cousin was in this band. Look at this. That's him right there. It's cool because it's got that social aspect where you can be connected to the scene for people that aren't connected. Like I, for fun, I go to coffee shops. And because I'm doing the Stage Rush thing, I ask baristas all the time, hey, where can I go tonight to have some fun? We're like, what's happening tonight? Where are the events right. tonight? And they always have one answer. Tell us. It's tell us. Go check out Tell, tell us. us, right? Everyone's go-to answers. Well, check out Tell Us because they're always doing like an event, you know, three events a night, right? Like right. they're always busy doing fun stuff. Like check out Tell Us. But apart from that, they don't realize Zootropolis is doing stuff. McCleary's is doing stuff. Yeah. Mickey's Black Box and Rock yeah. Lidditz is making a splash. Lidditz T-shirt factory up in Lidditz. Like there's so many new venues. And there's those like dive bars and hole in the wall bars and like Shamrock Cafe. Shamrock, like everybody's got something going on. And there's like these little pockets and gems of fun and entertainment and music that people want to go to. They want to be plugged into. They're probably right around the corner from. Yeah, and they just don't know. They don't know what's happening. They don't know what's happening. They're walking right over it. Right. Uh, it's, it's, inc and the, the, that is the struggle with the musician because all of my musician friends are always posting the, the day of or the yeah. day before. Like, hey, by the way, check me out. And I was like, you should have probably posted that a little before, <laughs> you know, yeah. because people had plans. Yeah. And that's and that's always the thing. Yeah. Well, and then stinking practice gets in the way, right? And you're a musician, you're like you're trying to practice your set, and you're like, oh, I forgot to tell people to exactly. go. Exactly. <laughs> and, or you all already assume people are going to go because they just, you know, it's, it's a lot of word of mouth, yeah. and it's not it's not a lot of uh, who what musician at doing gigs is gonna go, gonna put money into marketing, yeah, right? Because they can barely put market they can barely put money anywhere else. Yeah, besides... no, they're gonna hire a booking manager, and a booking exactly. manager is gonna be a full service white glove service where they say, hey, we're gonna handle all these ten things, and and maybe you were just looking for one thing, right? So booking managers are awesome, and your band gets to a level where you definitely need one, but then there's this gray area where you don't quite need a booking manager, but you do need marketing, yes, right, and like. You don't want to have to go to school to learn marketing, though, right? right? So that's where we're trying to shine. We're trying to shine for those people who don't need a booking manager yet, right? They're just not there yet, but they want a gig. They want a gig professionally, and they want to uh, be able to, to market themselves better. And so that's what we want to help. And even if, if you're at that level where you need a booking manager, um, you should still create a profile because people – you know what I mean? The venues are going to look at you, and you're going to have van fans on there. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, and, Regardless if you have a booking manager, uh, in fact, this might replace your booking manager. Oh yeah, it could, in a lot of scenarios it will, and not to not to 
upset booking managers out there, but in a lot of ways it will replace the booking manager for bands that, that uh, aren't touring, but it's, still yes, gigging, right? right? A touring band, you're going to need a manager. You're, you're going to need, need a little bit more than us yes. if you're touring, right? I don't want to say that we're right, everything course, to everyone. But I think we will prolong the time that you, we'll prolong how long until you have to get a booking manager. Mm -hmm. You used to have to get a booking manager here. Now you don't have to until here because we're giving you the tools to market yourself, to get gigs, right? And to, and you'd be surprised if you, so many musicians, their friends don't know that they could pay them to play. It's awkward to say, hey man, come play the bonfire, right? Because it's like, how much do I pay? It's just awkward conversation. People don't like to negotiate. People don't like to talk about money. It's awkward. If you posted your profile on your Facebook page, all of your friends would know they could book you to their house party, right? Or they could tip you if they just loved your music, but they haven't had mm. cash. Every concert they went to that you did, they just never had cash on them, right? So they can go to your profile and tip you. So having something where people know where to find you professionally, like a LinkedIn for your, right. you know, for your music, for your band, I mean, it's it's gonna help people get way more gigs. And the whole door knocking on venues and emails back and forth, like so many venues just have a spam folder filled of people they're, they're, right, they yeah. never saw. They never saw because right. you put too many links in your email or whatever, yeah. right? So like those days are gone. Like that's your grandfather's way of doing bookings. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of that in the industry. There's still a lot of people doing the old school method. That's how that's how we do it now. Yeah. I still, but. Yeah, it's deep rooted. It's deep it's rooted. Deep -rooted yeah. and, like, and like, so remember when Airbnb came out? There was millions of people who would say, I'm never sleeping on somebody's couch. I was one of those people. Right. I was like, there's no way I'm sleeping on somebody's couch. That is crazy. You're in crazy town. I'm going to stay at a hotel. It's professional. It's safe. Now, I can't wait to stay at another Airbnb. I love staying at Airbnbs because they've brought, they've normalized and they've brought structure to something that people wanted. And it's often nicer. than. And it's often else. nicer. It's cooler. And it's cheaper. It's all these cool things. Yeah. And so we're trying to do that same thing. It's like people didn't know that, that I could do that. Like you go see a band at the bar. I didn't know I could book them. What? I can book them to my house. Like it's yeah. gonna, it's gonna change things. So how how do you make uh your how do you make money off of this? Yeah, That's a yeah. No. So uh, the way that we make money uh is is twofold, right? So we either have a subscription plan or a transaction fee. So just like Airbnb, with Airbnb, when you book a hotel, uh there's a transaction fee, a service fee. We'll call it a service fee, a service fee, a little small percentage of the transaction that Airbnb takes as the platform. So we do that. We take a percentage of the transaction. If you book someone through the platform, we take a percent. If you're on one of our higher plans, we take less of a percent. So that's how it works. If you pay a monthly subscription fee, then we take less of a percent. But if you applied, let's say you applied to play TELUS, right, on TELUS's website, we don't take any of that because you applied directly. You didn't come to us. You went to them. Mm. Right, you went to tell us you didn't come to us, and so we also leave room for performers and venues who are trying to contact each other directly to, to work not, outside of to you. work outside of us and like hey and 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 venues aren't gonna say like oh yeah here's you know uh, here's your rate off your menu right they're gonna say hey this is a this is a special deal right this is a ticket split deal we need you to bring a crowd and we're gonna split do a ticket split with you or they're gonna say hey we don't need a headliner we need an opener we've got a band coming in town we need band support we need a, a opener. We're going to offer you this deal. So venues will offer their own deals, and sometimes performers will say, hey, I prefer to do this type of deal. So our platform allows for people to do their own types of deals, cash deals, ticket deals, whatever your deals are, but we also make it super, super easy to book something off the menu that a performer listed. If a performer says, hey, 100 bucks an hour, I'll play your house party, you can book them. Or if they say, hey, you know, 500 bucks, and we'll come you know, bring the whole string quartet, you, know, you can mm -hmm. book it off the menu. Because people, like, like vending machines, right? No one wants to call the vending machine guy and, and haggle over the, the cost right. of D7, right? You just want to put your money in and get D7. Yes. Right? And so Airbnb and Amazon are so popular because they've allowed people to do what they want to do, which is not waste time getting what they want. Mm. I want something. I just want to see it's well-reviewed, get a look at the pictures of it, and then buy it. Right? Uh, but then there's the more complicated ones, right? Like if you're having a wedding, you're not going to do that. If I'm having a wedding, I'm not booking a DJ based off a photo and review. I want to have a conversation. I want to know that you're not going to say something silly at my wedding, right? Right. Different strokes for different folks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what does it cost for an artist to sign up? So uh, we have free plans for everyone, right? So venues, artists, sign up $0 a month. If you sign up for $0 a month, it's like a 10 or 12% transaction fee. Then you can do the $20 a month plan, which is a pro plan, mm -hmm. and then it's like a 7% fee, and you can... Uh, do the enterprise plan or the the premium plan, which is like a five percent fee. Okay. So you can drop that fee down by paying more per month. Gotcha. So like if you're if you're just starting out as a band, do the free plan. 
right? Pay when you get a gig, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you're getting booked every couple of weeks because you're like the hottest band in town, then then be on the premium plan because you're gonna you're gonna save money by paying less in those fees over time. Right. <laughs> that's a that's a lot of numbers. That's a lot of numbers. That's a lot yeah. of numbers. It's on out. the website. If you go on the website, we don't hide it, so it's there. It's visible. You can see it right there. It's not a call for pricing, and we give you the snake oil treatment. Right. 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 <laughs> um, that's that's so. That's fun. so the artists set their own price. Like, yeah, artists come up and they set their own menu because it's so different. Like, so this is one of the things that I had to learn. So when I first made it, uh, me and my partner, we did hourly rates only. You know, set your hourly rate. I'm 100 bucks an hour for everybody. And that did not work for mm -hmm. musicians. So we had a lot of musicians pushing back, pushing back when we were getting feedback. During the feedback session, they said, hey, that doesn't work, man, because sometimes, you know, I'll play a buddy's house for X, but I might need to play the bar for Y to make ends meet, right? Right, right. Or... Uh, you know, like I have a full band or I have a trio or I have a solo acoustic act, right? So I have these different offerings that change the circumstances. Or if you're 200 miles away, that changes that the changes cir things. Yep. It changes things. So there's a lot of diversity. So we change it instead of an hourly rate of you just create a menu. You know, I'll do this for, you know, I'll do, I'll play these venues for X an hour or I'll play these venues for this number oh, per event, right? Gotcha. Per event. So it's not even uh, yeah. by hour. You can do it per event. Like our, our string, our four piece costs this much and it's two hours and it's not really flexible. And then this one is like, hey, I'm a solo artist and I can do, you know, one to three hours depending on what your needs are for X per hour. So now they can create their own kind of menu. That's incredible. Yeah, so, it's cool. Yeah, that, that's that's so awesome. So on if I created myself as an artist, I it, I could do it for free, but I can make my own menu. I, I could say, okay, if I want to play at TELUS, it is 75 bucks an hour. Uh, and this, these are not. I don't suggest any of these rates. These are just <laughs> numbers I'm making up in my mind. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but if I want to do a bonfire, it can be fifty bucks. Just yeah. plain fifty bucks. One hundred percent. And then I can make another option if, if you want me to play three nights, that's three hundred. That's or that's uh, maybe a hundred per night. Yeah, exactly right. So you can oh, you wow. can write it any way you want it to be, any way that you would market yourself normally. And this is going to help you from those awkward conversations. It is. Because when people see the price and they see what they want, they're going to click buy, right? And, and, and if not, they're going to try to talk to you about it. But it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shorten the, the – it's going to reduce the friction to the booking process. And what we found is that there's just so much variety. Like we have bands on, on Stage Rush that are 20 bucks an hour. Full <sighs> band, 20 bucks an hour. Uh, and they're awesome. They rock. And then we have other bands that are like 700 bucks per the event, right? And they say it doesn't matter how long – it's because we have seven people in our band and we all need to eat. Right. And so if it's 30 minutes or three hours, it doesn't matter. That's how, what we charge. And so the pricing scales so differently depending on your, on you know what type of artist you are. And our platform isn't just locked into musicians. So we've got DJs. We've got photo booths. We, you know, comedians, clowns, impersonators. Any type of performer wow. can be on stage rush. It doesn't have – now, right now, music is the biggest need. Of course. And that's what we've been marketing to. And so there's lots of bands and artists. But over time, it'll be, you know, tattoo artists and – uh, impersonators, comedians, you know, every you know, fire breathers. The weirder, the better. We want cool stuff at the touch of your fingertips so that you can say, man, I would love an acrobat at my kid's birthday. Go. Right? Or it's my daughter's bar mitzvah and she loves, you know, rock, punk rock. I'm going to book a punk rock band. That's insane. Yeah. That's awesome. It is insane. It is cool. That is so cool. <laughs> if I don't uh, say so myself. Well, well I mean, because that's just a one stop shop for performers. Yeah. Um, and you could probably get TV companies on under there, and like be like, okay, here's this actress that pays this X, and here's her all of her film film reels, and here's all of her stuff, and here's her menu. Yeah, like I've, okay, I'm looking for say a TV company is looking for a uh, mid uh, middle aged woman, you know, X X X Y Z description, and they they can just search search around and look. Yeah. Oh, for sure. That that's. That's yeah. a, that's gonna be gigantic for yeah. for like TVs and like the actresses around here, even like uh, Surf and Stage or Sight and Sound or yeah. like like that those kind of people too. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so our our goal, like our mission, is to create a million stages for performers from bars to backyards, everywhere in between. A million stages. That's what we want to do. We want to create a million stages. Create stages out of places that didn't realize they could be a stage. Yeah. Right. Like your little clothing store that just opened and you just had a launch party. You could be a stage. Like anybody can be a stage and to have local entertainment to make more entertainment in the community. Um, uh, but we really, our, our biggest, the other part of that mission is we want to keep it niche. We mm. don't want Fall Out Boy and Lady Gaga. We wouldn't say no to Fall Out Boy and Lady Gaga. I just <laughs> want to make that known. Lady Gaga, Fall Out Boy, if you're listening, you can sign up on Stage Rush. But we're not going to get the heavy hitters. Right. We want the local scene. Yes. We want, when you come to town, 
you can find like we want the local bands, the people that are the legends in that area, right? Or or a state over. Like I want the the coolest jazz band from New Jersey to come play at my bar this weekend, right? right. So like we want to keep it capped at a certain level where we're not having celebrities and post malones and stuff like that. Right. And and besides, if well, if you do get those, those prices are gonna be <laughs> oh, yeah. big, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so it, it, the market will probably figure that out on its own. Yeah. For but sure. yeah, that's insane that you're going to have, and this is planned for nationwide. How does one organize all of that? Yeah. Well, so it's really, you just, you, you build a infrastructure, right? So in the code base, you build an infrastructure that says, Hey, if it's in this state, perform X, Y operation, if it's in that state. And so you really just manage it that way. You kind of, it's kind of a meeting place, right? So people are still managing the event themselves, the venue and the performer are still talking. Like when you book a performer on our app, you're chatting with that performer. You guys are figuring out the details yourselves. Gotcha. So we're not enforcing any contract on you. We're not enforcing any how you perform or what you do. We're just we're just the meeting place. Right. Right. We're just the dating the site, platform. the platform for fans and performers and venues to come mingle and come be together. And you guys have just started. Just started. Just launched last month. We have a launch party this month at Telus. Uh, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, you guys already have. Do you guys already have all your books? No. So it's uh. So the launch party is July twenty eighth. Tell us three sixty at six p.m. And we wanted to do a, a variety of acts. So right now we have four acts booked. We have two more slots open. So any performers out there that want to perform at our launch party, you can sign up on Stage Rush. That's all you have to do. But so far we have uh, a local singer songwriter from Millersville named Annie May. She's awesome. Uh, she's going to showcase some of her songs. We got a, a local hip hop rapper called Kid Rose. Uh, Rose being Lancaster County, right? So uh, oh, he's yeah, from Lancaster. Yeah. Uh, so we want to get some hip hop in there. Uh, we've got a band called um, uh, Believe in Ghost from Queens. Uh, and New York. Yeah, Queens, New York. So uh, they were one of the first bands to sign up on our platform. Oh, wow. And they rock. They sound like the early Black Keys days. Like I'm in love with this band right now. I'm totally fanboying all over them. But they're called Believe in Ghost. And they're like an indie alt rock pop band. Uh, indie alt rock pop uh, punk band, not punk, just indie alt rock, and uh, but they're they're amazing, uh, they're awesome. I really love their sound. I can't wait for them to play. And then there's another band from Harrisburg called Holdfast, and they're a Celtic punk rock band. Uh, it's like the band she wears, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, you know, yeah. like oh man, they're gonna they're gonna light it up. And so it, we have these cool four acts, and then uh, and then we have two more open spots. And Ooh. so we're looking for diversity, so like cover band, folk band, bluegrass. You know, if we had time, we would do the Fire Breathers and the and all the other things too. But right now, we're just keeping it to different genres of music. So. Do you plan on creating more festivals by Stage Rush, put on by Stage Rush? Oh, for sure. We'd love to throw uh, a festival or concert, you know, at uh, Mickey's Black Box, Mick, Mickey's Black Box, Phantom Power, uh, Lizard T-Shirt Factory. We'd love to just uh, help people explore the town and explore different types of talent by putting on these variety shows where we're showcasing the different types of musicians that are just within a state away, right, or within a few miles away. Uh, so we're definitely planning more events in the future. This event is going to be specifically for the launch of Stage Rush, we're also asking for like a suggested donation to Music for Everyone because they're awesome. Awesome. And their mission, their mission is Music for Everyone, and we're trying to create a million stages. Right. So we're kind of aligned in what we're trying to accomplish here in different ways. Um, uh, but then, yeah, the, the event's going to be awesome. We got some sponsors from Tone Taylors up in Lidditz. They're bringing some cool prizes. Uh, Ross Productions is doing DJ and photo booth there. So uh, we're getting a lot of uh, cool stuff. And then Telus, obviously, super oh, gracious super grace, to yeah. sponsor the event, hold the event, and help us manage the event. It's been awesome. That's that's awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. So yeah, definitely planning more events too uh, where we can showcase people on the platform. And that's the other cool thing. All these bands that are being booked for the event, you can go book them on Stage Rush right now. You can pull them up on Stage Rush and go book them right now. Yeah, go to stagerush.com forward slash launch. You'll see all the launch party details and you can see all their info. So, and, and uh, it's it's a free show, right? Free show. Free yep, show, free show. Yeah. Suggested donation. Suggested donation. If you got some change in your pocket, give Too it to enjoyable. music for everyone. Yeah, the music for everyone um, is such an inspiration. They're the people, by the way, that, that they're the reason why there's pianos all over the city. Uh, yeah, which is awesome. Which is awesome. And if you hate it, how dare you? <laughs> Someone said if you just play the black keys, you can make anything sound good. Just don't touch the white keys. If you don't know how to play the piano, oh, yeah, just play absolutely. the black keys. I, didn't, I, I never heard that before. That's awesome. But oh, yeah. no, no, that's absolutely true because it's the pentatonic scale. Okay. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that gets into theory. But yeah, if you. Black keys, anything, literally anything. Yeah. Um, yes. 
That's awesome. I will second that. Um, yeah. But yeah, we wanted to support music for everyone because they're just doing an awesome thing. And like they fill they fill the town with music. Like I remember going yes. downtown, they had a, a big flatbed truck with bands on the truck driving through the city. I the, thought that what? was yeah, they had bands on a flatbed truck driving through the city playing music. I just thought that was the coolest thing. Like That's nothing insane. nothing brings the city alive and makes it fun like that. Like seeing like just art in in public. You're doing it in public. You're doing it in the street. You're doing it in traffic. Like. Music for everyone's doing a cool thing. So what we a, want to support what them. a culture jam. Yeah. I'm, I'm having Brendan Stengel on uh, in, a, in a few weeks. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask him about that for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the truck thing. Ask him about the truck thing. The keys around the city is awesome. And the truck thing. And then also just all the other. They take, you know, broken musicians. They take broken instruments and they help kids. Yeah, fix and them. Yep. They just do a lot. They do. They provide uh, funding for schools yeah. as well yeah. for the music program. So it, it, they, they do a lot of cool. Yeah, cool organization. Cool. We're gonna find other ways to support them too. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta find other ways to support you guys. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, you're doing it right now. Yeah, that, that's us, true. That's absolutely tell true. The, what does that say? Ten, 10 million viewers. What does that say? Ten right million there? viewers. Help, yeah, helping the world see, man. That's awesome. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, I'd love to do, uh, especially if I if I'm gonna be starting putting on festivals, I'd love to connect and talk about that because yeah. there there are so many people within. Uh, there are so many people I can name off right off the bat that would benefit from being on uh, Stage Rush. Oh, yeah. Especially if it's free. And because there's so you're right, musicians are unorganized. It's all get out. <laughs> and they, you know, because they don't have the time. They have their day jobs. They yeah. have they have so much other stuff yeah. they got to work about. They got about. families. They, they got, got families. Kids. They got kids. Yeah. We got one band up there. It's literally a bunch of middle aged dads is doing it, punk rock. It's not for the river. It is, is it? for the, the river, river, bro. Yeah, they are. They are awesome. Aren't they? Their bio is so cool. They are just a bunch of old, bunch of not old. I, I'm gonna say middle aged dads because I'm in that dads, category yeah. now. I can say that bunch of middle aged dads jamming out to punk rock. They sound a lot like Blink. They're just, yes. they're just, they're just crushing it, man. They've got I, like five thousand listeners on I know. Spotify. I right had now. Chad Hogg on the bass player. I'm going to okay. be having Kevin Warner, the uh, other guy. Yeah, they just launched the, a new song too. They did. Yeah. Uh, it was something about Chuck E. Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese, Chuck yeah. E. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, saw, I see like their ads. And, like this is the most. Wa- this is truly like yeah. what dad punk bands would do. It's the coolest dad punk band it I is, ever saw. It is awesome. They, yeah. they made dad it, punk should be its own genre. It really should. It, honestly, <laughs> if you if you want to hear some really good, really funny, also too songs, yeah, definitely check out For the River. They they are really awesome people. Yeah. Right now on the website, they're twenty bucks an hour. Twenty bucks an it's hour. Twenty bucks an hour to book for that's the. the tw- that's that's yeah. We a- thought it was a typo, and then we asked them about it, and they said, "No, man, we just want to play, man. Like we got yeah. jobs. We 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 we're getting paid. We just want to play. So I don't think they'll stay at twenty bucks an hour for long. I think no, they're, they're really in good. demand, and they're going to start to be able to make a little bit more. Uh, but right now, it's crazy that you can just get them like that. Right. That's that's so. <laughs> the, oh, that's so funny. That's yeah, so awesome. That's cool. So, what are some bands that or Here's a question. How do you market yourself out of the Lancaster scene? How how does one make make yourself known in places like Texas or California or other otherwise? Yeah, well so that's the thing about the music scene. Is musicians talk and musicians move around. That's right? right. And so if you're if you're hot enough in one spot, you'll reach those other spots whether you like it or not. Yes. Right? So like Lancaster is unique. Yeah, Lancaster is. is a it's hub. Yeah. Right? We are in between New York, Philly, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Jersey, like we're the center. Like yes. we are the train station, literally, for the major cities, right? And so because of that, we are just such a melting pot of culture and diversity, and we get all types of bands that come through here. And people like Telus and Phantom and HMAC just partnered with Live Nation and Mickey's Black Box. Like they're bringing in touring acts and they're helping to diversify the music scene, right? Yeah. So you're getting all of that through here. So as we are partnering, like Telus uses Stage Rush, Mickey's uses Stage Rush. Uh, you know, lots of breweries in town. So as people are using our app, performers will see it as they're touring through town and then take it back to their towns with them, right? And so people yeah. will see the app, take the app. So we're running a lot of social media ads. We're doing getting a lot of word of mouth advertising and performers like, hey, look at my profile, check this out. Like they share their profile on social and other people see them on Stage Rush. So it's a lot of self-marketing. Like the way the platform's designed is that as you share your profile, other people learn about it, right? Because other people can now book you and tip you, yeah. right? So it kind of grows itself organically there. And we really want to focus on the East Coast and really kind of, oversaturate the area, right? Because you can't go to Texas if, you, if you've if you got 100 performers in Lancaster, you can't really go to Texas yet. Yes. You can't book anyone all the way to Texas from Lancaster, right? Yeah. So we want to focus on Lancaster and grow out. We're already in Philly and New York and Jersey and Baltimore. So we're trying to just expand on this East Coast region and really focus here for the next year or so. 
Uh, and we're expecting to be closer to like 1,000 or 2,000 performers by the end of the year. And then we'll start graduating into the south a little bit and then right. moving towards uh, towards Texas and stuff. That's that's so incredible. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I can't believe you found me. Because that, that, that's how it, I assume it was you that found me, right? Yeah, well, I saw. So I in my feed on Instagram, as I'm like looking at these different pages to follow that are uh, like-minded industries, I see your content. And I'm just like, wow, look at this podcast. Like they got Rick Ruoff. They got all these local musicians that I know. Like these guys are a buzz right now. You've got a, a different interview a day. Like you're pumping out content. So I was like, all right, we got to. We gotta make a connection. We gotta talk to this guy. Like we're we're doing stuff. We're we're in the scene a little bit too. Let's talk, yeah. man. It was it was funny. I went, when I saw you guys um, start following me, I was like, what? Because there's a there's a lot of uh, companies like you guys that would that are kind of scammy. Yeah. Almost and it, like branding. Com- I thought at first you were like a, like a, like the random branding company that's like, oh, be a part of our brand. And, oh yeah. And you know. Dude, make this money, and there's yeah. it's a scam. It's a whole scam. Yeah, for so sure. At first, I thought you guys were like that, and I was like, I was skeptical. I was <laughs> oh like, no, well, what's going on here? But what? we'll have to have a later conversation about what we were doing that made you have that perception at first. Oh well, what what it was? It was the it was the it was the very simple logo actually. Oh, the, the simple logo. The very simple. Yeah, because it, yeah. it was just a, it was it's a point. It's like a like a pointer, right? Yeah, it's like a GPS arrow. Yeah. That could also be a guitar pick. Yeah, right. It was right. supposed to like ride the line there. Yeah, and, yeah. and that uh, might go. Branding might change for the for for anyone watching. Right. And, you may see a new brand. And I'm not I'm not knocking these guys at all because <laughs> now I know that they're like lo- they were legit. But like Stage Rush is like one of those like catchy names that yeah. one of the people would use. I was like, hmm. <laughs> Sure. I wonder, but yeah. then I saw you guys were local, and I, and I saw the stuff that you were pumping out. I was like, "Oh, yeah. do I actually?" And then that's what prompted me to the text. I was like, "Do I actually know you guys?" Yeah. <laughs> well, we, we so we were pick out names. We went through a lot. Like yeah. per- Performacopia uh, was one of the ones we went into. That's an uh, interesting one. Uh, uh, Gig Local was one we almost went with, right? Like, so we looked at all these different names and Stage Rush seemed to really communicate like that rush you get yeah. from performing or like, hey, I'm, a good in a, name. I'm in a rush to get to that stage, right? So like that was the name that really captured everything. Unfortunately, when we started Googling it more, Stage Rush is the Will Smith slap. Stage Rush is the tragedy at Astroworld. Like Stage Rush has another meaning Ooh. in the music industry of like rushing the stage, Yeah, right? right? So like there's good and bad. Like we love the name. The name is like... a. 100% encapsulates what we're trying to accomplish, yeah. but there's also a lot of news articles that include the word stage rush and they mean something totally different. <laughs> yeah, they, try, uh, trying to figure out, um, I, I, I've had this name, the story podcast for like a year or so. I love it. But I know it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, it, it really does encapsulate what I'm trying to do here, trying yeah. to get the stories, trying to get you know the experiences and et cetera. But oh my gosh, if there isn't a million other the stories, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, for and sure. If you Google the story, it's like, Okay, what story are we looking for here? Oh yeah, for sure. There's tons of different names, and uh, but yeah, I mean, all it comes down to content. I mean, branding yes. plays a piece for sure. For but sure, it's all about your content. And it doesn't help that there's an NPR writer with my <laughs> name. Uh, just oh, see, you think it doesn't help? I think it's a, a super slick advantage for you. It, it, yes, <laughs> as you're reaching out to people, they'd be like, "Oh my gosh, NPR is contacting me, and they have this That's, new story <laughs> podcast." <laughs> that it's happened a few times where it's like. Uh, I saw your profile on NPR, and I'm like, that's not me, though. <laughs> but you it, say that after the interview. <laughs> yeah, but people I'm will look it up. You know, it, yeah. It's funny, though, because NPR did actually use this studio to do an interview recently. Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah, so that was, that was, that was I, I had to begrudgingly schedule around that, but <laughs> whatever. But, um, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, it's. Stage Rush is a really good name. I, I do think so. Cause Thanks. I've, granted, in the music industry, I've never heard it negatively at, at all. But yeah, there are those not until days, recently. Yeah, yeah, not until recently. And yeah. and that's not to say that uh, your branding will reflect that at all. Yeah, no, I think so far right now when people see the name, they really identify like, I, I'm getting what this is about. It's about yeah. performing. It's about the adrenaline. I'm getting it. Uh, it's really just helping people understand that like, you know, just like Airbnb had to overcome. Mm. Like you can sleep on people's couches now. You can book bands now. That's a thing. Yes, you can that do that now. So helping people understand because they get there and they're like, is it, is it Eventbrite? Is right. It, like, <laughs> like right, what, right. what am I supposed to do? Is it so like, so, yeah. So it's like helping people understand, uh, you know, this new kind of uh, paradigm, this new uh, model of, of booking entertainment. Where do you see yourself in five years? 
on a beach, <laughs> uh, enjoying my role of accounting. Uh, no, uh, uh, in five years, where do I see myself? I see myself as uh, still a co-founder of Stage Rush, still growing Stage Rush, uh, and then also uh, growing Sober Bars, mm. uh, my passion project, uh, helping create super awesome nightclubs that don't serve bar, uh, alcohol, yeah. right? Creating safe places for people that struggle with substances or young people, right? Creating safe places for them to rock on and jam and meet and live life and do karaoke and do comedy and do and do fun and do life together. Have community. Uh, don't have to be with their parents, right? Have community uh, in a safe space. Uh, that that's where I see myself in theory. That, I mean, that's really my passion project. So doing sober bars and doing stage rush and then just loving my family and spend time with my kids. That's awesome. Man. Yeah, it sounds like you got it. Got it good for. For a little bit. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. There's a lot of work ahead. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, for build, sure. I can't tell you how much work it is just to build this. Yeah. A, pod, a simple podcast. And I thought this was going to be the easiest thing in the world. Not necessarily. Yeah. But uh, building a website, having to uh, deal with all of that stuff, having to figure out the numbers and crunch the, the code and crunch all of these different things and work and make it work. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And, and. And really, the, the one of the hardest parts of being an entrepreneur is fighting the discouraging times, the times oh, where it yes. feels like it's not working or you didn't, or you underestimated or overestimated something or people don't like it. Fighting those seasons is a real challenge. My wife, my wife helped me. Uh, I, I've, had, I've had loads of ideas, right. right? Like me and my wife love to invent board games. So we invent games oh. where we invented one game called I'm Sold where it's like charades, but you have to sell things to each other. Like we just create these games that are fun, cool ideas, and then we get them to like pre-production and then we stop. So like I have a, a notebook full of a million ideas that I've started and never finished. And my wife said to me, babe, uh, all you got to do is finish it. Right. It doesn't matter if it's the next best thing. It doesn't matter if we're millionaires. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it works. It flops. Just finish it. See it through the end. And it really inspired me to just say, you know what? No matter what happens, I'm going to continue down this trajectory. I also saw a cool metaphor uh, on LinkedIn or something. It was a guy explaining uh, uh, an example of a professor who had, two, had a, a pottery class. And he split his class into two groups. Okay, group A and group B. Group A, he said, I want you to make the most perfect pot. Just take two weeks and make the most perfect pot that you can think of, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and then he told group B, don't worry about what the pot looks like. I just want you to make as many pots as you can. Just go make pots. Spend the next two weeks making pots. Group A, by the time the two-week finale had, had arrived, group A barely had any pots made. And if they did, it was really terrible, shoddy work. None of them were proud of their pots. Group B had dozens of pots ma made for each person, some of them which were masterpieces. Right. And the moral of the story was, if you are always obsessing over this perfection that you'll never reach, you'll never do the work to get there, yeah. right? And if you're free from that bondage of like, it's gotta be perfect, I have to be amazing. If, you're, if you free yourself up from that and you just do the next thing and you do it, then you're gonna be really happy and surprised with the outcome. So I thought that was incredibly motivational for someone like yeah. me who's filled with ideas but I always had a hard, but because of my perfectionism, had a hard time finishing. Yeah, that's that. It, I, the only reason why I like legitimately started this podcast was because one of my friends, uh, we we went to the bar one night and he, we sat down just to, just to talk, you know, just friends talking. And I was like, I want to do this podcast, and and I, I just don't know. I'm such a I'm such a visionary. <laughs> I, I'm a gigantic visionary. I have all of these plans that that are impossible quote unquote. Um, <laughs> and uh, one, one of them was like, just to start this podcast and to like have lot, play, play. So I really want one, one thing I wanted to do was play the music like, yeah. like I usually do, but I wanted it to, I, there was another guy, it, he was a drummer that I, I was going to start this with. Unfortunately, he fell to the wayside, mm -hmm. but um, what we were going to do is we were going to have uh, play their own music together. Like so I would be on the piano, he'd be on the drums and whoever would be doing their uh, other act yeah. and we would perform their songs live for the podcast. Oh, cool. Cause, I, Cause it'd be fun. Yeah. yeah it's just a bunch of fun. But I was like, Oh, I can't do that. So I don't know if I, but he was like, doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. You can do it later. Yeah. Just start the podcast. And That's I was awesome. like, good friend, man. I, it was a great. He's a, a great, amazing friend. I'm having him on this Thursday. No, this Wednesday. Uh, ten o'clock. So yeah, there's the people that do yeah. stuff, man. Then there's the people that never let them give up. Yes, right. And they don't get any of the glory or recognition, but just as important, man. The just people as that, important. that keep you on track. Yeah, and it's and those people and this it's the lesson you got to learn. You got to do it. 
And yeah. that was because uh, my mother, uh, when she was still alive, uh, I would I was always I was always building something. I would build a, a cat house for my cats. I'd build this chess box or start painting this chess box, and I would never finish anything. Mm. And she was like, "Court, you're never gonna do anything if you don't finish it." Mm. That's awesome, man. What a good word to have. Right. And so and so from there, I. <laughs> I, di- I didn't take that advice. <laughs> of course, I'm, what do you know, mom? Yeah. You know, it's like, and I have kids with ADHD, so my my thing my thing of the moment would always change anyway. Yeah. But it's cool that it lives in you because look at it re yeah, appearing, right. re showing itself now. Yeah, and and now I'm doing all of these things that I've never thought I would be able I would never be able to do. That's awesome, man. So. We're kind of rounding out our radio time, but we'll uh, we'll keep going on Facebook Live, and we're gonna take a few five minute breaks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play one of my songs. Ashley, go ahead and, and tell everybody again where they can find you. Oh yeah, so uh, go to stagerush.com. Uh, press release is officially coming out Thursday. Stagerush.com forward slash press. Uh, if you want to learn more about the launch party, stagerush.com forward slash launch. You can also find us on Facebook, uh, Stage Rush app, or Instagram, Stage Rush stage underscore rush uh and so that all those places you can find us uh you can also google stage rush and just after you get past chris rock and will smith you'll find our website <laughs> tucked in there really? uh yeah well uh it depends if you google it with one word or two if you google it with one word we come right up if you google it with two word we're on like page 14 after you see all the slaps and the stage God, rushes yeah. uh but then uh launch party is july 28th at telus 360 starts at six we're gonna have six amazing acts Four have already been booked. Two more slots are open. If you want to apply, just create a profile on Stage Rush. It will be a free show with a suggested donation to Music for Everyone. Uh, and then we got some prize, some gear we're going to give away. We went to Tone Taylor and said, hey, we're doing something cool. You want to give away cool stuff? They're like, we'd love to give you some cool stuff. So we got some cool stuff we're going to give away to bands, like some pedals and things. And then um, uh, Ross Productions is going to do some DJ in between sets and do some photo booths. So it's going to be awesome. Awesome. And if you want to support us and what we're doing, please be sure to share, like, follow, whatever. Uh, follow us on facebook.com forward slash the story Corey Rosen. That's C O R Y R O S E N. You can follow us on Instagram at, at the underscore story underscore podcast. We even have a TikTok now because I've learned that that's where the marketing is at, actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to reach people, young you, people, you can teach TikTok. me how to TikTok. I'll teach you marketing. I, you teach me how to TikTok. Listen, I don't even know where to begin. I never <laughs> used TikTok. The only reason why I got TikTok was for this podcast. So I'm <laughs> I'm learning. I know it starts by putting your phone on a ledge somewhere. Yes, and that's you, and where you, it begins. You you, it, you the video always starts with you starting it and you back up. Yeah, and yeah. then you do some dancing sometimes, <laughs> or you, you make weird things. <laughs> Something like that, it, and it just goes viral sometimes. That's awesome. And sometimes you, you, you people are like, what are you doing? But uh, yeah, so if be sure to follow us. Uh, and if you really enjoy this uh, stuff that I'm doing and really want to support it, please do share. Uh, that's how we get our reach, and that's where we get our most support. And if you directly want to support us, please do buy some merchandise. We have stickers for sale and we have shirts and hoodies coming out with the logo on the front and the first 50 guests, including Mr. Kyle of Stage Rush on the back. Right now, we're going to take a five-minute break and play a song that I wrote two years ago. It's called You Remain. It's it, We were in the pandemic. Things were going on and it was just a bunch of things shutting down and uh, for me as a Christian, I was like, well, God's still there. God mm. always remains throughout our troubles. Mm. And with that said, this is You Remain by me. Awesome. When I am weak, can no longer speak, you are there right beside me. When all hope is lost, and I can bear the cost You are there Paying it for me And when things turn to dust And there's nothing to trust You are there Honest to me Oh, it's clear who you're meant to be You Feel 
That's You Remain by me. So if you want to continue this conversation uh, with us, please check out facebook.com forward slash the story Corey Rosen. But we're going to get you guys back to the radio. All right. So uh, as a Christian, right, yes. uh, you've also done some work for Victory, or right? No. No. That, oh, there's someone else I'm thinking about. But you've done work for uh, – who am I thinking about? Anyway. Forget about D- it. Different, different As, guests. Yeah, this different. Sometimes it all blends together. <laughs> sometimes it really does. Most Christians have been involved with a church named with Victory church, at some point in their at life. At some point, so in their to life. your credit, to my and <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. So, but as a Christian, where how does your faith influence the way you do business, if at all? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, the way that my faith influences the way I do business is the way that I try to conduct myself in the business community. And with employees and with and with partnerships, right? And so I try to do things like the way the Bible would say, which is be salt and light, mm-hmm. and let people see that your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, right? Let, let let people see that you're doing things with excellence. You're not cutting corners, you're not being cheap, you're not being hateful. You're doing right. things with excellence and with uh and 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 you're doing things well, right? And so that's that's how my faith kind of inspires the way I do my business. Is I want to do things well. I want to make sure people are protected. I want to make sure people are loved and respected. I want to make sure that I'm doing something that's not ripping people off, right? Mm -hmm. That's a big one. I want to be able to lay my head on my pillow uh, and be able to say my prayers with a clear conscience. That's awesome, man. So how how does that does that manifest at all in your in your business at all, or is that just its own entity? Well, it 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 really depends on which business, right? So like a, a place that makes tacos should just make tacos. Fair enough. You know what I mean? But some businesses have more of a ministry or a mission aspect to it, right? So it kind of just depends, in my view, of the industry that you're in, right? So we're Stage Rush is the entertainment industry, right? Right? Entertainment is covers all genres, all right? things. Entertainment and music doesn't have a religion, right? Right. So uh, it's really what we've built as a as a platform where we won't allow hate speech or anything like that, uh, but we kind of allow people to be themselves, be who come as you are, come right. as you are, right. be what you are, be who you are, uh, is kind of how Stage Rush works. 
Uh, and then with sober bars, it was more, uh, you know, there was a lot more of my faith being plugged into sober bars mm-hmm. because it had the mission of helping people uh, get free from addiction, free from mm-hmm. bondage, right? Like nothing's more right. Christian than freedom from bondage, right? Like that's why Jesus came to free us from our sins. So yeah. like sober bars had, to me, had a lot more of a spiritual impact on the world uh, where stage dress, in my opinion, doesn't have a spiritual impact. It's cool. Right. It's a it's cool thing. Cool thing. I'm not sure if we're doing any ministry with stage dress. Gotcha. Yeah. So with sober bars, what were some of the lessons that you learned when you tried to imp- to start it? Oh man, uh, plenty. There were. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Uh, one of the things I learned uh, with sober bars, um, I mean, I, I learned so many things. I learned a lot about myself, uh, just like leadership flaws, character flaws, mm-hmm. things like that. Things that didn't work. I had a small team that I was forced, I was kind of thrust into this whole leadership role. Like this thing was growing legs, right? And we were trying to stay on top of it. And I realized I was not a good leader. Yeah. Like I have leadership personality traits, but I also have some really rough edges, right? That some people have to really kind of, you know, coach me. And I had to coach and grow a lot. Like like what? And like what aspects? Oh gosh. When you're a perfectionist and you're passionate about something, you will oftentimes ignore someone's feelings or the way that you treat them to get to your end goal, right? Mm -hmm. So you have this vision of perfection and you're passionate about getting there and anything in between you and that vision can sometimes be a roadblock, even if it's a person. Mm. And so that can be super problematic and you can hurt people doing that. And so when I was younger, it was just a lot more relevant is that I saw, I I was focused on how do I get to my end goal? It's too much, too much on that. That's something I've learned is that I can be very blunt and it's not it's not because I'm mean or anything. It's just because I'm I'm to the point, mm-hmm. right? And it's when I have a feeling, I I, it's my policy typically yeah. that I tell the person straight up how I feel because I feel like just beating around the bush is kind of like waste time. Oh yeah, I, can, I can't talk about the weather. Right. Well, well, well not, not 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 even not even that, but like uh, just like to tiptoe around something that's oh, yeah. bothering you. That's I I hate that. It's like well because it's. It's, it's not, it's creating anxiety. It's creating, it's, cre- it's creating this environment where I'm unsure of like what, what's going on here. I'd rather just know the dynamic that me and this person are in or I tell them directly, Hey, I didn't like that. Or, Hey, that's messed up or yeah. blah, 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 whatever. And sometimes that turns people off really quickly. Oh yeah. You have to know your audience. Yes. You have to know people's love languages, right? Oh, for sure. Like there's so many, like, so I always, when people exp- ask me to explain my personality to them, I always explain, you know, imagine people in a museum looking at art. I'm the guy that'll find everything wrong with that piece of art. Like, and that's a gift in some ways. In some in ways, some, for sure. For Absolutely. problems that need solved, that's a gift to be able to find what's out of place, right? Yeah. Patterns, things like that. With people, if you're always finding something that's wrong, that's a terrible quality to have, yes. right? So I always tell people, like, that's my bend, and that's what I have to work against. I have this critical eye that I always have to be working against. And in leadership, when you have to make quick decisions, you sometimes throw manners and courtesy to the wayside just to get the job done, and you forget that you're dealing with people, and people are passionate about being something, being a part of something, not being used for something. I want to be a yes. part of something. I don't want to be used for something. Right, exactly. And uh, so... What, what other lessons did you learn besides leadership? Yeah, so besides leadership and just kind of like personal growth and things like that, I really learned that um, addiction is just such a huge untreated issue in our country. Yes. Like substances are pushed so much. Like there's laws against like you can't do cigarette ads for kids anymore and you can't do this and that. But <laughs> anymore. Anymore, right? right it exactly. was exactly. But it's still our society's soaked. Yes. We're soaked in substances. Yeah. Right? It's in the movies, every bar you go to, now Chuck E. Cheese's and yoga studios, really? uh, 5K races, like you'll find it everywhere. You'll find liquid, uh, courage, lubrication everywhere now. And caffeine. And caffeine, right? Coffee. And caffeine, the most socially acceptable. Yes, right? exactly. So like our society has a substance problem. People have a substance problem, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of the things that Sober Bars really taught me was that there's just no places that make a stand and say, you know what? No substances here. We get it. Some people are really good at moderating. But others in our community are not. Are not. And so we want to create a space where you don't have to guess if you're going to do well today. Right. right. We're going to create a space where you're just not going to be tempted. Like, like for instance, I, I gave a TED Talk on sober bars and the need for substance-free entertainment, <laughs> right? You, you uh, gave a TED Talk. Yeah. It, it was a TEDx Lancaster. I mean. Uh, That's it was, still cool, though. It was super cool. I was super nervous. I probably threw up a couple times beforehand. Uh, it, it, it was awesome to be able to do it. But one of the things I learned in my research was that um, 
there, there's just so many places that offer alcohol. And like, it's funny, you can go to a Turkey Hill and you cannot find any drink for a dollar. Everything is two sixty nine, two fifty nine. You can't find a drink for ninety nine cents unless it's the Arizona teas. Unless the Arizona teas, because they made yep. that stance, right? Yep. Everything else is like two fifty nine, three fifty nine. But if you go to a bar on the right night, you can get dollar shots. Yeah. Like, like you know, like, if if you really look at that, like the accessibility of substances in our culture for those that can't moderate, it's like walking around a prison every day of your life. You're in, like, like, and so my story was so much different than other people. Like, I still worked at a bar for six months after getting sober, but I know people who are still working the steps and they can't walk past a bar. They just right. they have to drive a different direction, yeah. right? And so, like, there's the, both extremes and everything in between, right? So it's different strokes for different folks. And I just learned that people really need because once we started trying to get sober bars on its feet, and we were doing publicity and news, WJL covered us and all this stuff. We were getting emails from people in like other countries like the UK and Australia and people from other states saying, oh my gosh, this is exactly, if my brother would have had this, he'd still be alive. If, if this was in our state, this thing would be, and like people were like supporting it from every you know, corner because they knew that this is what's missing in our community is that space where I'm not pressured into using substances. And uh, pressured means even temptation, it being there. Yeah, just the, exce- the overwhelming ex- right, accessibility. Right, exactly. Yeah. And something I had to really work on is I love eating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ditto. And uh, Fourth of July, I'm going to a barbecue later. Exa- me I'm, too. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna throw down. But um, my problem was fast food. Yeah. Because I hate grocery shopping and I I'm lazy, so I making a peanut butter sandwich. No, when I can just drive to McDonald's. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Wally, Wally World, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's 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 been a, a struggle for me because everywhere you drive, there's there's uh, fast food restaurants, and even their signs are like designed to make you feel hungry. Yeah, I don't know if you knew that, but like red and yellow, they make you feel like hungry. Oh, that's awesome! No, I knew that about colors and branding. I didn't know that those are actually. Well, I'm not surprised. Yes, that's awesome. That's, right. Yeah. So it, it, it's awesome in one way. Aw- yeah. But it's awesome that colors can do that. It's not, not awesome, awesome that, that corporations are trying to exploit, trick me. Yeah. 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 But uh, so it, it was it was hard because it was only my lack of money that because well. Dollar menu, you get yeah. burgers, like full fledged meals, and it will destroy. First off, the food makes doesn't make you feel the best. Yeah. Afterwards, and it's 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 not cool. Yeah. It's not good yeah. for you. Now multiply that times a, a million, right? Because exactly. uh, drugs make you feel amazing. Amazing, right? They right. make you feel great. They give you this great high, and then all of a sudden you wake up and your whole life is ruined, and you it's like you blinked. And also, but not only that, but you need more of yeah. that drug. Oh yeah. So it's it's so yeah. There's this cartoon on social media where the little duck goes and it takes the little drug and then it flies and then each time it takes the drug it flies a little bit less high mm. and then eventually it can't even get back to normal because it's taken so many drugs. Wow. Right. And so like that was the metaphor of like once you start down that path, you there's all there's a place you can get where you can't really get back to normal. Yeah. Without help, without some type of intervention, yes. without some type of someone helping you up out of that place. That's and that's why. AA, NAMI, uh, NA, OA, Nar- Narcotics Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, which I was a part of. Yeah. To help me get out of overeating. Yeah. All those groups. Yeah. That community aspect. I mean, as Christians, we believe God created us for community. Yes. Right? God created us to do life together, not on an island by ourselves, right. which some people want, right? Like, you don't really want that. You would go crazy in a week. You would go right? crazy. We desire community. And community is the most strongest element that God gave us for healing and for protection for all of those things, right? Yeah. And so like AA, like I, I never went through AA. Mm. I My community was my church. My church and my small group, uh, which is like the, the when you're not meeting on Sundays, right. you're meeting during the week yep. with your small group, right? And so m- my small group, they knew of my struggles, my small group leader, and they knew that I was struggling with drinking. And we went to a ball game. Uh, we went to a baseball game at the Clipper Stadium, and it was like beer and wings night, right? <sighs> and so we went to beer and wings night, and I'm getting my wings. I'm about to go grab a beer. And I noticed that all the guys that came with, it was a guy thing, right? All the guys, none of them were having a beer. And I sat down. I was like, hey, I, hey, man, I, I noticed n- no one's drinking. And they said to me, how could we tempt, how could we drink around you knowing that you're struggling? Yeah, how are we going to be a stumbling block for They didn't you? judge me. They didn't tell me not to get a beer. They, didn't, they just showed me the sacrificial love of like, we're going we're gonna to withstand. We're going we're gonna to hold back because we know that you need the support right now. And that was, God used that moment to plant a seed. 
And that seed grew into action over time. But right. he used that moment powerfully to show me just this love, this sacrifice, this selfless love of like, I'm not going to, a true person that loves you is not going to want you to stumble. They're not going to let you stumble. Exactly, yeah. Right? And, and, and so it was just super cool to see how that worked. And that was my community. That was my AA. Like, that was my community. That was my group. And so AA, NA, really great. You know, whatever you can find if someone's in that, in that arena, in that world, whatever community you can find that can help get you out of there is, is, is crucial. Yeah. So did you try to start Sober Bars? Did you get the, how far along in your journey to get to start that project did you get? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so uh, let's see. Was drinking, came up with the idea, uh, talking with people at the bar while drunk about this sober bar idea. <laughs> then uh, over time, uh, started drawing, drawing up a business plan and then got sober. And then um, started throwing events. Hmm. It was the first thing I did. Was started throwing Why? events. I threw, because I, I wanted people to experience fun without alcohol. I wanted to, I wanted to put the proof in the pudding, right? Hmm. I wanted to say, I can't tell people that sober bars is cool and will be a thing if I can't show them how to have a good time without substances, yeah. right? I got to prove it first. So I threw a concert. I threw a video game convention uh, called Console Con. It was at Ursa Lunar, huh. uh, the old uh, hookah place. So hookah is a drug, but, you know, whatever. It's like like, like a tobacco. It's like a tea. Uh, uh, anyways, at this hookah lounge where they I asked them not to serve hookah that night, but it was this really cool video game uh, convention, right? Like parents brought their kids. It was cool. There was a DJ, uh, DJ Ross, uh, uh, DJ Def X. He was spinning uh, some like Mario Kart theme music. It was it was awesome. So this uh, video game convention through a, a arm wrestling challenge called the Brawny Man Challenge, where men with beard came and some women who had fake beards uh, would come <laughs> and, and arm wrestle, and the loser had to either shave or remove said beard. Oh. Uh, and that was like the competition. So that was really awesome. So try to just do these fun, awesome, uh, entertaining events to show people like it's awesome to live life. Like life is, when you were seven, you could hula hoop because it was awesome. Yes. You didn't need a shot before you hula hooped. You didn't need a couple drinks before you hula hooped. You could just hula hoop because hula hooping was fun. As you get older, we lose that. We lose that sense of I can do things because they're fun without needing supplement, right? And so that's what I was really passionate about trying to remind people of and I thought events would be the best strategy maybe help us raise some sponsorships, some fundraising, some awareness. And that's exactly what it did. We got a, good, a lot of good publicity out of that. Where it failed was I just couldn't make it profitable. I couldn't, I, I didn't have, I was bootstrapped, right? I didn't have a nest egg. I didn't have any money. I was uh, about to get married, right? I was, you know, really poor. I was working in restaurants, right? I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have a lot of time. And I couldn't find a way to make a profitable you know, mocktails and food, like that requires staff. And that requires, uh, you know, I was working with the Rabbit and Dragonfly at the time and using their space, which is a really cool space. And we were super, yeah, cool space. We were aligned in a lot of ways and they were letting us use their space for some events. And I just couldn't get to the place where I felt confident that I could pursue this without completely bankrupting my future. Mm. And so I had to pull back and I had to get a nine to five and I had to start rethinking my strategy. But at the end of the day, I just couldn't, like I went through the, the, the assets, great social enterprise pitch, uh, Assets Lancaster is a nonprofit. Oh, okay. helps. Helps. <laughs> so Assets is like kind of like SCORE, but Lancaster driven. It, it helps businesses um, grow. Uh, mm-hmm. And especially when they specialize in B Corps, like B Corps and like they've done a lot for Lancaster in the business community, but they have this competition kind of like Shark Tank. Okay, you, that's what I was going to compare yeah, it to. Yeah, okay. you go through it, you learn how to business plan, you learn how to do all these things, and then you pitch at the end. And so I went through that competition. I learned a lot about the, you know, the financials of a business and all these things I didn't know. Uh, and as I learned, I got more and more scared because I was like, wait a minute, I am not prepared to undertake this. I kind of put the the, court, the cart before the horse or however that expression yeah, goes. Right. I just wasn't prepared. And so through that competition, I learned I wasn't ready. So I wasn't ready from a maturity standpoint with the way I, I led people. And I wasn't ready from a financial standpoint to embark on such a, a big thing. Um, so that's kind of why it didn't come to fruition. Uh, so now my strategy in this season of life uh, is to make it more of a directory resource for other sober bars, highlight other people that did manage to do it well, promote them, and, and create like a sober bar map so you can see when you're traveling, oh, this is where a sober bar is, this is where a safe space is, and create that kind of resource online uh, for soberbars.com and, and make that available for people until said time when I have enough you resources your own. to open up my own sober type teluses and chameleon club yeah. places. That's, that's, uh, see, when I was interviewing Rich, he I'm, I'm pretty sure it was him who said that if I knew, if he knew what he knows now at an early age, if he knew what he knows now at an early age, he wouldn't have done any of it. Mm. 
because he knew how hard it would be, how how much of a challenge it'd be. And I feel like um, if I had known what, like, if I feel I feel like the same thing with you, if I had gone through like that finance stuff and and all that stuff, like stuff that I needed to know, I probably wouldn't be doing this because I'd be like, oh, that's that's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's tough when you look back on things. I mean, because you can't get those lessons any other way. Yeah, besides sometimes doing it. besides doing it. But I think everybody would go back with that knowledge and either take a different path, yes, or take the same path but with the knowledge, with, with less mistakes, with the knowledge. Yeah, for sure. And I would definitely go back and change some things, but I wouldn't not go down that path. Right. Yeah, I I, I agree with with you there because this is something I want. This is a passion project anyway of mine. Yeah. It's it's. Not like I'm, granted, I want to grow it and I want to make uh, make this be a, like a full-time thing. However, I, I, I realize that it, it's a long way to go Yeah, and I got to just keep pushing through. Yeah, for sure. I saw, uh, who's the actor that does Captain America? I can't oh, uh, Chris name. Evans. Chris Evans did a little spiel online recently about uh, if you want to be amazing at something, he's like, I can't pick up a sport and be amazing tomorrow. I have to just dribble. Dribble, 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 dribble. Focus on dribble. And then I saw that. I was like, you know, that's that's insightful. We forget sometimes because we're not patient. Exactly. We want it now. I want the end result now. We live right? in an instant gra- gratitude uh, society. Yeah, but we often, like, we watch NFL and we see these guys making these amazing catches and we don't that's put in, true, yeah. into our mind, like, they just spend hours a day jumping. <laughs> they just spend hours jumping. That's how they can jump up and catch that ball. They spend, And then when they're done jumping, they spend hours running. Yes. And we're done doing that. They spend hours just holding a ball, taking the ball to dinner, taking the ball to their, like, right, you yeah. know, like they just do all these fundamental things. And, and it's hard to do the fundamental and the tedious things when you so badly just want the end result. I, I was at a pool uh, once and there was, there was a guy, he was just in the deep end, just jumping up and down repeatedly, making, just jumping around, doing his own thing. And I was like, what in God's name are you doing? <laughs> was like, and he was like, well, I'm an Olympic jumper. And I was like, Oh, that's amazing. What? I that well, I like you know jumping. Oh, running. like the pole. Oh, and the no, and not the... not the pole, but like the 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 three step jump or like oh, the long okay. jumps and stuff like that. There's so many jumps to keep. There's track so many of. jumps to keep track of, and he and I was like, I jump if something scares me. I have right, like exactly. Little, that's a little jump I do. Exactly, and uh, and I was like, well, why? And he was like, well, because you're in the water, you're getting a lot of that resistance. So I'm like p- training my muscles to just whoo and yeah. push, and I was like. So I started doing it, yeah. <laughs> so working out my muscles with them. I started jumping around in the pool as, as, a, as a kid. I was like, wow, I, now I know what my muscles feel like because, yeah. oh, my gosh, where, where, was I in pain the next day? Oh, sure. Just doing, just doing 20 of them. I couldn't, yeah. And he, he kept at it for like 30 minutes. I was like, dude. Yeah, and that's a great illustration of, of, of being an entrepreneur starting anything is that is, there's a lot of pain, right? Oh, there's absolutely. pain involved because you're going to fail. And, yes. and and as, and as a as a business owner, typically your fails are public. You're doing public fails. Like people are watching you fall on your face, right? Yes. And so like you have to be able to withstand that and say, you know what? I've fallen on my face, but I'm standing back up and I'm going to do another 10 reps. Yeah. Right? And, and being able to, to push through that and understand that it's a part of the process. People start to feel failure and they're like, something must be wrong. Surely right. I shouldn't be feeling failure on, on this planet. Right. 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 Like exactly. Wrong. Like, no, that, that's right. You are doing it right. You are... You are fleshing out. And you're learning. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, something that uh, always got me was the numbers. It's yeah. the numbers, Mason. Um, but uh, it's like truly, if you look at the numbers, it's because they're not all, there's ups and downs, right? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I looked at my numbers recently and uh, it was like uh, 2,000 post engagement this, this week. It's down 10%. And I'm like, I, I'm losing post, but I'm still getting 2,000. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure, you know what I mean. Like stupid, like stupid stuff like that. That's it's. If you look at numbers all the time, you're gonna go crazy. Oh yeah, you'll definitely go crazy looking at numbers. Uh, you know, it's it's it. You've got to have the passion. The yeah. passion make the numbers work. The if pa- you've got the passion and you've got the product, the the numbers will come. Exactly. Is right? that's why I don't even pay attention to the numbers, yeah. or I didn't pay attention to the numbers to, to begin with, because I knew if I stuck with it, or if I if I looked at it, I would be discouraged and just yeah. stop. And that's why, like, having a co-founder, like I said, the other thing I, uh, you know, I didn't really have a co-founder with Sober Bars. Mm. It was me bossing some friends around, and it didn't really work out well for anyone, right? right? And so, like, I, I, I had a control issue. I wasn't willing to invite people into the, the conversation, mm. right? But having other people can help you keep focused on the right things. Like, I would often get paranoid 
I mean, I have a lot of flaws, right? Paranoia is one of them. Yes. I would often get paranoid that a competitor would create a better sober bars, uh, right? And I would always be scared of like, I'd have the numbers figured out, have everything figured out, and they'd be like, oh, but what about, you know, five years from now, this thing I shouldn't be worrying about, what about that, right? Like, right, 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 like, right, right. like what about a competitor? And someone told me, they said, Kyle, if you believe you're supposed to do it, you'll do it. Don't worry about if someone else tries to copy you or someone else does it or someone else got to you first. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, if you believe you're supposed to be doing this, do it with do your it. whole heart. Just do it. And like, and, 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 you know, just, it was a good refresher reminder of like, man, the things we can preoccupy our minds with that are as effective as rocking in a chair. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know? So, uh, it was, if you ever want to do like a business thing or an entrepreneur thing, just do it. Yeah. And because you're going to learn so much more. And yeah. if especially you, if you're young, especially if you're young, yeah, Start, you have just fail hard, man. Fail, fail forward, fail, right. Forward. Like just fail. And move on. Yeah, fail, fail move on, and, and move and, on. You know, like, like, you know, like I have young kids, mm -hmm. and as young parents, I think maybe all parents go through this stage of wanting to be a helicopter parent, where we buzz around our kid, and I don't want any bug bite or, or scrape, trip or I don't nothing. want anything yep. to ever harm them. But if if I were to have my way, if I were to succeed in that, I would deprive my child of feeling a skin knee and getting back up. And understanding that they're going to be okay, or having that moment to cry, the fan foundational moments. Yeah, those moments are so crucial. Like now, obviously, I'm not going to throw them off the car, of course, right, right, and like push them into those moments. But I'm now going to allow those moments to mold them the way that they're meant to. Right, failure and pain and struggle is all supposed to be towards our benefit, right, and and to build character and to build endurance and to push us towards, uh, you know, being. Uh, you know, just being better and understanding and, 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 and just putting things in perspective. Sometimes I teach kids how to swim. And sometimes yeah. what, what I will do is if they, if they're playing around or making, being silly. And, uh, so there's a safe way to get in the pool that we like to, instead of like cannonball, on the edge. cannonball style. Uh, well, okay. you're sitting on the edge, right? Okay. So you're supposed to turn around and like lower yourself that way. So you're still holding onto the wall the entire time. Okay. Some kids, some kids will grab the side and just slip in like that. And and then they, they forget that their far, their arms only go so far back, oh, and yeah. then they'll just fall. So if but you know people catch them obviously. Yeah. But if they do it enough, I'll just sit there for a second. Yeah. Only for a second, you know. I'm not I'm not cruel or, yeah. or mean or anything. <laughs> just enough for them to realize, oh, I should never ever do that again. Yeah. Because that was scary, and I yeah. don't like that. Yeah. My my dad and I'm sure many people part of his generation often have the saying of, "Well, you only do that once." Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and that's sure. and, and that's exactly what, why I do that because yeah. they only do it that once, and yeah. it's never ever again. Yeah. And uh, and it's as long as it's not traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> Some people will funny. do it over and over again, and oh, especially when you're talking oh, about absolutely. business. In business failure, you'll see people have the same failure over and over again. It's because they're not embracing the failure and learning from it. When right. you're resistant to failure, you will repeat the same fail over and over again. You have to embrace your failures and accept it. This is my little flaw, and it's revealing something about me. And if I don't try to run from it, if I don't try to hide from this flaw and this failure, then I'll learn from it. Mm -hmm. And so if you embrace your failures, you will learn and you'll make new failures. And you, yeah, and, and you'll continue to grow. Continue to grow, exactly. Yeah. So how, do, how does one, uh, you, you mentioned your family, how does one balance all of this stuff that you're doing? Because if you're such a perfectionist, you just want to control and, and work on this all day, all night. How does, how does one step back and go back to your family? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> with a lot of asking for forgiveness. Mm. <laughs> that, that's how. Uh, it, it's not easy by any means, right? So there's been compromises, right? There's been sacrifices. There's been times where, you know, we, we, before we got married, me and my wife did pre-marriage counseling with mm -hmm. a pastor of our church, and, and they said, you know, you know, we talk about, you know, I get done work, I'm so tired, I don't feel like talking, this and that, you know, and talk about, you know, when, you, when you're working in a day, you can't use up all of yourself before you get home. You have to, re you have to keep something in the tank for when you get home. You have to remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so just some really good wisdom about, like, you know, you have to prioritize, you have to make time for the things that are important, Right. And so when you're starting a business, there are late nights, right? Which can sometimes lead to late mornings. Or if it's an early morning and a late night, it's a cranky morning, right? Yep. It can lead to all sorts of friction when there is a birthday party or a holiday, but there's also a deadline, right? Mm -hmm. And so those things can start to compete with one another. So how you manage it is really um, grace, having grace for one another, having grace with your spouse, 
having grace with your kids, being understanding of where they are, and that them wanting you to play the ball instead of do work is is a good thing mm-hmm. and is a right thing. And 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 you have to prioritize that. If you're all work and no play, there will be no one to share your success with, and it will yeah. all have been useless, right? And so, like, and kids will resent you, and kids will resent you, right? And so, like, we, you know, there, there's a balance there. And from a faith perspective, uh, and I don't do this well because I don't always hit this balance very well. If you ask my wife, she nope, nobody she, does. She'd tell you, uh, <laughs> you know. But uh, no, she wouldn't because she's so gracious. But um, in God made a couple fish and a couple bread, a, lo- a couple loaves of bread, feed five thousand people. Mm-hmm. He can do the same thing with a couple hours of work. He can make a couple hours of work be as productive and as effective as two days of work. Yeah. If you put the right things in the right places, if you prioritize your faith and your family above the things you're doing, then God will make the things you're doing multiplied. Mm-hmm. Right? And so that's how I try to balance it is just remember that like, hey, I didn't get an eight-hour day in today. I got a four-hour day in today because the lawnmower broke and this and that. I only got four hours in today. God, make that four hours into eight. Make it count, Lord. Make this make me productive. Give me focus. Give me success. Give me favor, right? And just uh, trusting that God can multiply, just like he did the fish and the loaves, he can multiply your time. And so that's been a huge um, realization uh, that's helped with me. And then also having help, like having a mm. village. Like the, the saying, it takes a village to raise a family. It does. 100%, yeah. right? Having your church, having your family, having your friends, having community makes a big difference. When I was raised, we didn't have community. So it was a bunch of, it was just struggle, constant struggle. And so now I'm fortunate, my family's fortunate to have people around us who can help us bear our burdens. Uh, and that's just, that's a game changer. Yeah. So we're kind of wrapping up the episode. So I got a few questions I want to ask. Yeah, for sure. First one is, where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs> um, so as a Christian, what do you define as worship? What do I define as worship? As a Christian, for me, worship is um, using your gifts and abilities to reflect back to God uh, love and adoration. So using the things that he's given to you. So when you're born, God already made a deposit. He already put things in your bank account, Mm -hmm. right? If you're funny, if you're fast, if you're smart, guess what? You didn't do it, right? God put that in the bank account to start you off on this journey, right? And so worship for me is using those things to reflect back to him, thankfulness and love and adoration. Good answer. (laughs) Uh, What are, if there is one piece of advice that you could give to any person starting a business, what would it be? One piece of advice, anyone starting a business? Oh man. Um, One, just one? I would say um, get, uh, don't do it by yourself. By yourself, it will be exhausting, taxing, and you'll get so discouraged you'll give up. Find people that will support you, whether that's SCORE, a SCORE group, and a mentor from SCORE. It's free. You can get free mentors from SCORE. SCORE? Whether it's assets, whether it's your church, whether it's a a small group, whether it's a business partner or a friend, find people to get behind what you're trying to do. If you're doing something worthwhile, people will be there. There will be people who want to help. That's what my, my biggest piece of advice for someone trying to do anything is find other people and then equal with that is, is be okay to fail. Fail in a school. I mean, those are my two biggest things. Find people because by yourself, you'll probably ruin it, right? <laughs> find, find people. Just, it's, it, you've got one perspective when you could have 10, right? Exactly, yeah. And, 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 and just be okay with failing. I mean, those would be my biggest advice. And yeah, like SCORE. SCORE is a free resource. It's a, it's a nonprofit, I believe. And they just have mentors. You can call up SCORE and say, hey, I need a mentor. I'm starting a business. And they'll just assign you to a SCORE mentor. It's super cool. Yeah, I know tons yeah, of people who have done it. Out. Definitely check out Score. If you're trying to get serious about starting a business and you need expert mentorship, definitely start with Score. That's what I need. And assets, assets link. Because you're telling me I need someone else to be. <laughs> <laughs> and then create a co-founder dating site, uh, Comingle, Comingle.com. Co- <laughs> founder without the e, just founder with the dr. <laughs> oh, is that like a legit thing? No, no, I'm just, I'm oh, just oh, brainstorming. Okay, gotcha. Ever since you said you need a co-founder, and we talked about co-founder dating sites, I was like, man, that's a great idea. Right, that's just right. how I work. I'll just go off on a tangent now. <laughs> so, what is you, you've been a comedian, you've uh, worked at bars. What is one of the funniest or worst things that you have ever seen happen? Period. Funniest or worst things I've ever seen happen. Period. 
Oh man, how do I answer that question? Uh, all right, let me think for a second. Funniest or worst things I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> that's a tough one on the spot I, to go through the memory bank and think of one of the one funniest of, things. One of the funniest things I've ever seen as a, as a wedding DJ was uh, it was oh what who it was a very short it was a very short groom, a very short groom. I'm talking like five two, yeah. And uh, the wife was bigger, um, but uh, taller than that is. Yep. Um, and oh, what what was what was the song? It, it has something to do with height. But <laughs> so all of his all of the groomsmen grabbed his shoulder, and just lifted him up, so that he was eye to eye or, or just a bit taller than 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 his than the bride. Oh my goodness! And and yeah, and and uh, eventually it got to the point where you know they're partying and they were just. Throwing him up in the air like he was nothing. <laughs> and just this, this really short, uh, he, he was bald too, so it was, it was, it was more funny oh to me. Oh my gosh. But just seeing that happen, just a bunch of dudes uh, partying around this, this small man. Oh, wow. It was, so, it was very funny. <laughs> so, it reminds me Zachariah from the Bible. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's hilarious. I, I would have to say, I mean, I can't think of an exact thing. I think I've, I've been at a wedding where the bride's, the the flower girl was actually a friend of the groom, a guy, and he was like dancing down the aisle doing oh, the flowers. So those are always hilarious. You see yeah. those on TikTok and stuff. If I had to pick one that was both like the funniest thing and the worst thing I've ever seen, it was me and my wife doing a, uh, a dance routine for our wedding. We did one of those, um, what do you call it when you do a collage of dances? Oh, like a mashup mix up? Like a mashup. We did like 10 different dance, like this whole little thing where we tango, then we salsa, then we oh, did all cool. these things. It was both awesome, hilarious, and terrible because we were both so nervous about it to you do that kind of thing. And we rehearsed it so many times. I remember rehearsing with her and, and we'd be dancing and I'd say, babe, can you come over here. I'm not going to drop you. I promise I won't drop you. We're practicing dip. I won't drop you. First time dropped her. Uh, because she we, we we miscommunicated on where she was going. <laughs> so like, Dropped at your wedding? No, no. This is during rehearsal. Oh, okay, okay. Months okay, before okay. our wedding, when we gotcha, were trying gotcha. to practice this dance mashup that we did. Uh, but that was one of the that was something funny and and both uh terrible because we watch it, we cringe right, when we course. watch it. We're like, oh, I can't believe we did that. Uh, but that's, people love that's it. That's hilarious. Yeah. Like, one time, uh, this is probably the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Uh, but also really funny. So the the groom was really into dinosaurs. He just loved dinosaurs, loved Jurassic Park, loved everything. So the and I was told this beforehand. So I, I and well the the bride was going to walk into the Jurassic theme park. Yeah. But what she didn't tell her her, uh, her groom was that she was going to get one of those inflatable dinosaur suits <laughs> and walked out <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, and, and <laughs> so, so we just see but uh da with her holding her bouquet in the big dinosaur suit coming down and uh so this and there was a sheet lifted and just it came down and she was out. And so it and he he was crying oh when, when it happened. I was and I was like, This is ridiculous. What's oh, going that's on? that's hilarious. Yeah, it was really it was really <laughs> awesome. It was so fun. Yeah, I love comedy, man. I love making oh, yeah. people laugh. My my dad. He uh, uh, he tells a story one time of where him and his mom were at a funeral, and because of the anxiety, uh, they just started laughing hysterically. They couldn't help themselves, right? Like humor is just mm -hmm. such a, it's just I such get, a powerful force, right? They get called laughing at the worst times. Yeah, and it's like because they're not they're not morbid people or anything, you know, like that at all. But they just were the uncomfortableness of the situation. They just resorted to 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 to, to humor and to laughing, and so uh, you know, laughter is just such a powerful force, mm -hmm. um, you know, and and. And it helps prevent us from taking life too seriously. Absolutely. Right. We can all get into this whole, you know, like look at the times, man. Look at the right, news. Exactly. Look at everyone yep. fighting. Like we can all just start taking things so seriously. A little bit of humor. Uh, and that's one thing I've loved about comedians. If you've ever noticed really great comedians, they don't just do comedy. They actually try to impart truth to you oh, yes. in the middle of the comedy. Once they've got you laughing, they've got you relaxed, then they'll try to offer you some truth. Mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle would do that. Mm -hmm. Like all, all such great comedians would just start to try to communicate something to you. Uh, you know, in, in the midst of their set. And, and even pastors do that. Like, they'll throw a little joke on stage to try to get you, keep you engaged. Um, but yeah, humor is just such a, such a powerful thing. And I love, I love improv comedy uh, because it's unscripted. Right. right. Everyone's skeptical of scripted humor. Improv, you know it's not scripted. So yeah. like, 
when I was at like Lancaster Improv Players, we went to Steel Stacks Comedy Festival, and there was this one group. I don't remember the name, but they did a they did a a form a type of comedy called Cat's Cradle, where they jumped back from four different stories. It was almost like a Tarantino style, where they mm. jumped between these four stories, and then at one point they all kind of came together. Yeah, yeah. And it was just the most amazing comedy I'd ever seen in my life. They had me gut like just laughing from my gut constantly. And because they were just in such perfect synergy and harmony with each other. Neither one was overstepping the other. They were all kind of submitting and and directing. Yeah. And like they were all just, it was fluid. And it was beautiful. It was great art. Uh, and it was hilarious. It was such an awesome thing to see. And I think, um, you know, when, when, we're, when we're at peace with each other, we're having community and we're doing things and we're, and we're laughing, there's just some magic that happens that can be almost no words for, you know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. So if if you want to check out Stage Rush, please do. Yes. You can find them on Facebook. You can find them on their website, stagerush.com. Yep. And you can find them on Instagram. And uh, July 28th? July 28th. 28th. Thursday night, tell us 360, 6 p.m. Be there, be square. Be there or be square. It's free. Be there, be square. <laughs> yep, yep. It is free. Suggested donation. Suggested donation. Um, for music for everyone. It's gonna be an awesome show. But yeah, I really hope everyone can make out. We already have like 150 people interested uh, in attending on Facebook, oh, which wow. really means like 15 people will show course, up. I don't know but, how those things work right. with, with Facebook events, but it's already generating a lot of publicity. We are doing a press release officially Thursday. Mm. We will be putting out a press release about it. Um, but yeah, we're excited just to have an awesome night. Hear some great performers perform, and uh, and and launch this super cool thing. Yeah. With all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Please, if you do, if you do like and support what I'm doing, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, whatever. Uh, and if you really want to support us, please do buy some merchandise. It, it I can't t- tell you this. Uh, I want. We want to do more things. We want to do more cool stuff. We want to do more festivals. We are well. We want to start doing festivals. We want to start building building this podcast and really help supporting the local scene here. Yeah, and that's and the way. Fortunately, it's through money. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, if there's any co-founders out there that have some deep pockets and some marketing knowledge, if there's any investors, any any sponsors. Corey's, Corey's ready to mingle. I'm I well, <laughs> yeah because I want to do big things, and the only thing that's stopping me is the money. Yeah, because it's that's unfortunately that's the world we live in. Yeah. We'll be encouraged by that. You're already doing big things. Thank the, you. I the way that you are presenting yourself and the content that you're producing, it's incredible. Thank you, man. Well, we do have stickers. We have uh, sweatshirts. Please, if you're interested, uh, ask me about them. I'd love to to connect. But if all with all that said, we have a guest tomorrow at ten. No, it's gonna be at eleven thirty because he needs some extra sleep, and that's totally fine. Uh, it, a guy called George Yellick. He is one of the best bass players I have ever met in my entire life. And he is super cool. He he's he's this tech wizard dude. He's uh, he's so many things. He's an awesome percussionist. I'm really excited to talk to him. He's an old friend of mine, uh, professor from LBC, and I really hope you tune in tomorrow because he's got some really great insight into things that musicians would have never ever thought about. Mm. And with all that said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of July Happy to everybody. Fourth of July. And I hope you guys enjoy some really great food and fireworks. Yeah, I know I will. Yeah. (laughs) With all that said, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.